Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Friday of the 23rd week in Ordinary Time, but today is also a memorial. Today is the memorial of Our Lady of Sorrows. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus' father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself, a sword, will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, the, uh, the memorial of Our Lady of Sorrows really does begin at the time of this reading and the prophecy by Simeon. Now, Jesus was presented in the temple, as is the custom of all Jewish families, that the parents bring the first male child to the temple to be dedicated to God. Now, their service in the temple is being provided by the Levites, but still, excuse me, ceremonially, uh, the firstborn uh, sons still have to be presented. So Jesus was brought to the temple for that purpose. And as you know, when Simeon saw Jesus, he began to prophesy, saying, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory for your people Israel. And it's this prophecy that amazed Jesus' father and mother, Joseph and Mary, as we begin our text today. They were amazed that Simeon would have such a precise understanding of what was taking place in seeing Jesus. But then Simeon goes on to prophesy again, particularly to Jesus' mother, to Mary. And after saying that this child will be a sign or was is destined for the fall or rise of many in Israel. So in other words, uh, where people stand or fall with respect to God is going to uh, be a part of his destiny. He is destined as the Messiah. And he also goes on to talk about the fact that he will be a sign that is contradicted, something that was brought about often in his life. And it was because of that second part of the prophecy that, again, uh, Simeon goes on and says to Mary in particular, You yourself, a sword will pierce. And this was the beginning of Our Lady of Sorrows. This was the first sorrow. And so the sorrow was the fact that being the mother of the Messiah, being the mother of God the Son, would have, you would have thought, I mean, it would be an amazing, glorious, wondrous event, which it was. But also, because of what will happen to her son, Mary can look at her life as being a life that will be impacted. Her heart will be pierced by swords. And the church, basically, in looking at this prophecy that uh, Simeon gave to her, outlines in particular seven sorrows, or seven, seven times that a sword really pierced her heart. And these sorrows then become the seven sorrows, or another way of saying it is the seven dolors, which is the Latin for for sorrows. And these are the things that uh, really hit the heart of the Blessed Mother during Jesus' life. And you may remember that even at the time of Jesus' birth, One of the things that it talked about is Mary pondered these things in her heart. Her heart was a treasure chest of experiences, a treasure chest of encounters, not just her personal encounter, but what her son was going through. Like any other mother, 
she took very personally anything that happened to her son. And thus, these sorrows really pierced her heart. Now, the seven sorrows uh, begin, as I said, with this prophecy. That's the first piercing, <clears throat> is recognizing that this is going to be a part of life. One of the things, when we had the most holy name of Mary the other day, Mary's name is Star of the Sea, but it also means beloved. But a third meaning of Mary or Miriam in the Hebrew would be bitterness. And it wasn't that she would be a bitter person, but that she would taste a bitterness. And so that prophecy was the first tasting. The second of the sorrows was the flight into Egypt. And there again, as this newborn came into the world, the first thing they had to do was flee for their lives, but in particular for the life of their son, that Herod wanted to destroy their child. And Herod was a treacherous, evil king. And so they had to flee into Egypt and there to hide until the, the uh, reign of Herod was over. The third uh, piercing, the third sorrow, <clears throat> was the loss of Jesus in the temple. And he was lost for three days. It isn't just a, oh, I lost my kid in the store kind of a thing. But for three days, they didn't know where he was. At first, they thought he was with a caravan with other members of the family. Then they found out he wasn't with the caravan at all. And so they had to return to Jerusalem. And so that that trip back to Jerusalem must have been horrible, just wondering how they're going to find him as they go into the midst of all of the people that are teeming through the streets of Jerusalem. And they find him there in the temple, confounding the elders. And so that was a piercing. But there had to be a little bit of a piercing as well in that, because when they found him, he was incredulous. Well, you know, shouldn't I, you know, be about my father's business? And uh, so there was that sense that they realized that he is not just their son again, but there's something going on with him that is very critical to uh, the destiny of the world. And then we have the uh, carrying of the cross. And again, we have his scourging, carrying the cross, his condemnation that had to have really hit her heart hard. And then the fifth sorrow is the crucifixion itself, where she saw her son nailed to the cross. And then the sixth sorrow was being taken down from the cross and laid in his mother's arms. So there Mary, cradling the lifeless body of her son, just as she cradled his uh, newborn body as a brand new mother 33 years before. And now she had his lifeless body. How that must have pierced her heart. And then to lay him in the tomb is the seventh. And being laid in the tomb is its finality to the ending of his life as she knew it. And little did she know, or that others knew, how wondrous it would be <clears throat> that he would rise from the dead. But these seven sorrows really pierced her heart. And so we have these seven sorrows. And so this day is called Our Lady of Sorrows. Earlier in the church's practice, it was actually called Our Lady of Compassion because the sorrows that she experienced were compassionate. They were with someone else's suffering. To suffer with is what the word compassion means. So she suffered with her child on these seven occasions in a very, very personal way. Well, this is the memorial for Our Lady of Sorrows. So may the, uh, the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> well, recently we've had... Uh, some wonderful memorials for the Blessed Mother. We've had her nativity, the naming, her name, most holy name, and then now uh, the seven sorrows, the Our Lady of Sorrows Day. So today, let us remember the Blessed Mother and let us offer up a Hail Mary to her uh, and uh, ask for her intercession that she might draw us closer to her son. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.